It's really important to understand the differences with which children come to school in terms of their oral language. Enormous differences in vocabulary, in understanding of the language structures, in their ability to use things like the negative, the interrogative, the questioning. These are things that vary enormously when children arrive at school. And if you, if you have a little child that comes to school uh, with very limited language skills in terms of standard Australian English, I do hear pre-primary teachers and reception teachers and kindergarten teachers say, they're just little, they'll catch up. The research evidence is that they will not catch up. We have to do something about developing their standard Australian English skills, which isn't to say that we don't acknowledge the richness and the variety of what language they do come with. But what will give these children the best chance in life in Australia in the world actually, because English is the global language, is skills in standard Australian English. That's what they will need to fill out an application form. That's what they will need to use in an, in an interview. So we have to develop their standard Australian English skills. We need to do that in a whole variety of ways and one of the best ways to do this is to give them more experiences with better role models than they are, better language users than they are of the language. Now the best language user in the classroom is, is the teacher, but she can't, with 18 or 24 or 32 children, spend as much time as we need, as they need. So we have to find out ways of getting each children to have increased interaction with a, a more advanced language user. This might be the pa parents who come in, this might be older children who come in on a regular basis, with a buddy class, Year 5 students coming in to talk to Year 1 students, but it really has to happen very often on a daily basis. They could read a book together, but it needs to go beyond that. It's not just listening to the child read, it's talking about the, the story, talking about the vocabulary, giving, expanding on the vocabulary, allowing the child to respond to questions. So it's not just all input, but it is allowing that interaction. That is what that is what develops those oral language skills, one of the most important ways. So schools have to find ways of doing that, to do that at a whole school level. Another thing that children need to be able to do too is practice some of those life skill experiences that come out of working in the little shop in the, in the classroom, working in the little post office, working in, in the home corner. Those, all of those opportunities build oral language as well. Working around stimulus pictures, fantastic. There is no excuse in the digital age not to have lots and lots of wonderful pictures in classrooms. Pictures of things that have just happened. A little car accident. The aftermath of a rock fall. So that children can talk about, how did this happen? Or a series of pictures that children can put into sequence so that they start to see the, the linking of, um, of activity and explaining all of that. Children cannot read, uh, read words that they don't understand. We have to build their oral language development in order to, to do that. One of the best things that teachers can do, and this is widely done in classrooms already, I just don't know if teachers know how wonderfully precious it is, is the kind of language experience technique where if children haven't had experiences that many other children have had, what you do is you share the experience, you do the cooking activity, you go on the um, excursion to the park or to the zoo or whatever, you take the photos, you look at the photos, you draw from the children what was happening here, you're modelling slightly more sophisticated um, expressions to represent what the children are saying, you write this down underneath, children can be supported through the reading of that, that kind of shared experience, shared language, really contributes to their oral language development. Now, that guarantees that you, they have had the shared experience. You do it together. It's a really, really important thing to do and it's one of the best things that came out of some of the early work around developing early language development. And I think as we've gone a little bit more prescriptive in wanting to teach some of the other elements of, of reading, We've forgotten some of the richness that comes out of those, those shared experiences. That's, there are some ideas around um, developing oral language. Using props, using stimulus pictures, 
language experience and giving more opportunities for the children to, to listen and interact with better language users than they are.